All right, TCG history time. So last time we discussed the overall series history of the Dragon Ball Z franchise. We went over every single Dragon Ball TCG ever released in English. This time, we're doing that again, but for the series that you all wanted to see as a continuation, Digimon. It's interesting because the Digimon franchise actually shares a lot of history with the Dragon Ball franchise for card games. A lot of the same rises and falls, but you'll see that as we get into it. I will say we're only talking about the English release Digimon card games today uh, because that's what I'm familiar with. I'm actually a huge Digimon fan and have followed everywhere the IP went since I was a little kid and still like it to this day. So I was around for most of these card game iterations and I played every single one of them at some point or another. So this time you'll get a lot of my own opinions on the games, which you didn't get last time because I hadn't played any of the Dragon Ball card games for the most part. But this time, I am the expert. Also, uh, you might notice a, a trend with the images you're gonna see on screen when there are images. You're going to see a lot of cards for each card game, and one trend you'll see is that there's Terrier Mons everywhere because that's my favorite Digimon, so if I'm gonna show off a card, it's gonna be him. And here's our first game. And we're starting off with a doozy. This is the Digimon Digi Battle card game, the first English released Digimon card game, which released in 1999 with the start of the original anime and the first big Western media push for Digimon. It was that point in time where everything needed to have a card game, you know, because there was this other big franchise that ended with Mon that was kind of exploding. So, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, the difference is the Pokemon trading card game is an iconic game that has lasted for over 20 years now and is not going to lose its popularity anytime soon, whereas this game lasted a massive two years. Yeah, this is one of those areas where if you do a direct comparison between Pokemon and Digimon success in the 90s, the card game is one where all the points go to the Pokemon card game. So it is based off of the original Japanese card game, which is the Digital Monsters card game, which has a crazy history of its own. We'll talk about it someday, maybe. I don't know. And it takes elements from that. You know, the card frames look fairly similar, but it strips things down a ton because it has to be simple for Western kids. And it's really, really, really bad. It is not one of the worst card games I've ever played, but if we were giving it like a rating out of 10, it would be like a four. It's not super great. When it was released in 1999, it was done so under a partnership between Bandai and Upper Deck because Bandai did not yet have a major presence in the Western card printing market. So they used Upper Deck for their card printing and infrastructure. But by the second set, Bandai had gone solo. They had built up their Western-based card printing enough so they did not need to rely on Upper Deck anymore. I do really enjoy collecting the cards for this game because they're very nostalgic, but it's not a game I like to play. I played it before once on TCG Buzz several years ago, and that match is a pretty good representation of what you'll get here with the gameplay. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. But beginning with the third booster set, things changed. The game was soft relaunched with a couple minor rules changes, but primarily an aesthetic change. The card back would be updated, and the card frame for the front side was also different, and graphics would be standardized on the front, so all card images would be CGI renders to make the game look cool and digital. This was an attempt to better brand the card game to match up with the current era of Digimon, which was setting to be a little more edgy and adult and technological than Pokemon. How does it play? Well, it's the exact same thing as the previous version. There's basically no difference. And it would last for a little bit longer. Maybe the rebrand did help keep it going a little longer, but I don't really think so. In total, we would only get six booster sets and a couple pre-constructed decks. Even with them trying to keep up with the times, it still only lasted two years. 
I think the big thing here is just the game quality wasn't very good and there were a lot of growing pains for it. It didn't start off in a, a strong spot as a more organized product like Pokemon being distributed by Wizards of the Coast. But even if the game had everything going right for it, I think the gameplay still would have killed it. Now we have a uh, Digimon Detector. This is one of my like personal demons here. Uh, when I was a little kid, I had Digimon cards and I loved Digimon and Digimon was my favorite franchise, except maybe Zoids. Anyone out there like Zoids? Yeah, Zoids. Uh, but yeah, Digimon was my favorite thing ever, and I had the posters and, you know, toys and whatever I could get my hands on. And a lot of that included hand-me-down cards I'd find in various places. You know, Digimon cards weren't common enough that you'd see them in stores but all that much. It was more, hey, my friends got some Digimon cards or get them that kind of way. But I only had cards for the original card game and its various iterations, and the card game after this one, which we'll go over after this one. This game I had a single card for, which came as a promo with a figure, and I didn't know anything about the game. I had one card for it, and that was for like a decade before I actually looked into it, and I bought cards for it, and I decided to play it, to only discover it was the worst thing ever. Uh, this enigma from my childhood turned out to be terrible. It is by far the worst Digimon card game. And part of that is it's not really meant necessarily as a card game. That wasn't the big focus. They were there to sell toys. The thing was the cards themselves would have codes on them, which are called Digi Digits, which is amazing. And you could use them with the physical digivices to unlock those cards and unlock special things in the digivices. That was the main thing here. So the card game itself was kind of an afterthought. And if you've ever played rock, paper, scissors, but where you occasionally get to draw a card and shuffle your deck, then this, this game will feel wonderful to you. That's exactly what it is. It actually has two different rule sets, one for like an easy quick start mode and a more advanced game mode. And even that is one of the least interactive, least clever, least built up card games I've ever played. You would get more fun out of a standard playing card deck, which does not surprise me that they did not have that many sets for the game. Four sets were released, but Four sets sounds like a lot, but each set was really, really tiny with not that many cards in them. It wasn't really designed to be a long-term card game. It was just to get all the functionality out of the digivices. It's more like a uh, run of amiibo cards now, if that's not too dated, than it is a serious attempt at a card game, which might be why the cards themselves and especially the digivices are very rare because Digimon itself was kind of at the start of a decline as a franchise, so the print run for these was quite small, which makes them rare and collectible now, even though the card game's terrible. So our next attempt at a card game would be the Digimon collectible card game, which began in 2004. This would be a full push from Bandai at a new, accessible, well-maintained Digimon card game, and it's really weird. <laughs> this is probably my favorite Digimon card game to talk about because it's so different from everything else. Nothing feels like this. Except for one thing, and that's Yu-Gi-Oh! Because this game is a straight up clone of Yu-Gi-Oh! Down to as much as they could take while still including Digimon elements with like, you know, Digivolution. So it feels like Yu-Gi-Oh, but like Yu-Gi-Oh that someone modded to be Digimon based. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, I would not consider it very bad. I think it's a fairly competent system. It's just not anything amazing or special for the time, especially in a time period where a lot of card games were being made. So the focus here is on aspects of the Digimon franchise and the Digimon lore that aren't really focused on that much in the Digimon anime. You get a lot of focus on the backstory of Digimon in general, 
you get a lot of focus on the Royal Knights, and it focuses a lot on the X Evolution Saga, which was this thing in a Digimon movie that only came out in Japan that's fully CGI and it's really, really dark. And uh, this series certainly matches the looks of that with a darker overall color palette and, well, CGI images everywhere. This game is not that great overall, but it is definitely the best game so far. It's also very rare, probably a little bit lower than Detector, but the cards did not sell all that well because no one really wanted a new Digimon card game in 2004, I guess? And because of that, the collector's market for this game is very, very expensive. But get into it if you really dig the aesthetic like I do. It would only last till 2005, just, just to show you how not big of a franchise Digimon was at that time. But it's worth a look. It's worth remembering. Now we see our biggest break we've ever seen with no Digimon card games being released. With the end of the last game in 2005, it would take nine more years till we'd see a new Digimon card game based off of the current then Digimon flagship series, Digimon Fusion, or Cross Wars, if you're Japanese. The Fusion card game is kind of good, actually. Um, Digimon Fusion is probably my least favorite Digimon series, so that kind of biases my opinion here, but they actually got the gameplay pretty solid. It takes elements from the original English Digimon card game and kind of just fixes it. Break all of the weird mechanics down and build it up to be simpler, better to follow, and actually fun to play. It's a pretty good game. But it only saw two booster sets released in a couple of promos. There really wasn't a big push for it. It was more one of those well, this franchise needs to have a card game put out to promote the brand kind of things, then it was a serious push for a new card game. Kind of like the Yokai Watch TCG, if you've ever heard of that. <laughs> That's uh, another case. But the gameplay here is actually really good. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's competent. And the art's okay. So... It's probably the weakest note here, given only two booster sets, but at least it was worth the purchase. And we see yet another break after the Digimon Fusion card game ended in the year it started, 2014, until 2020, when we would get a new Digimon card game, the one that is currently running as I record this video. So if you're watching this years in the future, this game might have ended. I don't know. I can't tell the future yet. So this is the Digimon card game. It's a game that takes a lot of elements from another Bandai card game that had been released rather recently called Chrono Clash, using a lot of the same elements, including importantly, its mana system, which is really unique. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, go watch some gameplay of either game. It's one of those things where you just got to see it to understand it, but it's really cool. The game was released in April of 2020 in Japan, but initially there was no word of an English release. But Bandai must have taken a glance into the corner of their office where there was a wheelbarrow of money sitting there coming in from people importing Japanese booster boxes, and they changed their mind. The English release went on sale later in 2020, but things have been pretty touch and go thanks to, you know, the massive pandemic. So supply issues have been quite high, which has caused the secondary market for the game to be insane. But let's hope those are temporary issues that will be fixed out if you're watching this in the future. Uh, I certainly hope so because the game is pretty good. It is probably the best Digimon card game ever released, in English at least. It has two things that none of the past games really had. One is a truly good gameplay system, and the second is actual attention from Bandai. Bandai, with all of the previous games, could have pushed for them harder, but didn't. This time we get full marketing campaigns and commercials, I get them on YouTube all the time actually. There's been in general a big push for this game. It feels like Bandai actually believes in it, which is a first. Well, that's my thoughts on the 
goings of the Digimon card games over the years. I'd love to know what you guys think. What is your history with the Digimon franchise and card games? And you can discuss it even more with me directly on our Discord server. Of course, you can also check out the TCG History Instagram to check out some of the sweet cards I have in my collection. And finally, there's our subreddit. Check that out too. And I'll see you guys next time.